welcome to my next video tutorial which is going to be focused on integrating Django's debug toolbar. So it's known as Django debug toolbar and this is essentially a set of panels which is going to display a lot of information in terms of a particular request or response that is being handled within your Django web application. Now just a little bit more of the look and how it will be. So perhaps you're making a request or receiving a particular response in your application. On the right hand side here, you can see the Django debug toolbar and you can parse it according to history, Django versions, the time, various settings. You can check the SQL, SQL behind the code in play. You can have a look at the static files, templates, and you can view all those details with this um, Django debug toolbar on your application. So I'm going to demonstrate further so that you are more aware of it. So let's get started. Now the first thing that you need is a simple project that you're working on. It doesn't have to be a big project, it can be a small project. So here I have one of my older projects that I worked on before. So just make sure you have a simple project up and running. Um, it doesn't have to be fancy or anything of the sort, just make sure you have one. Once you've done that, you can go ahead and install the Django debug toolbar within your application. So what I'll do is I'll stop my server and I'm going to install this package accordingly. So Django debug toolbar. Okay, there we go. So it's been installed. Next, we're going to look at the full on installation guide. So of course, the first step we've already done, I will be sure to attach links to both of these sites in the description below for this particular video. So if I were to scroll down, you can see that we've done step one already to install the package. Okay, step two is just to check for prerequisites. So if you're using Django 4, like I am, then you're not going to have any issues here. So just make sure that you have installed apps um, set with django.contrib.static files and that you have your static URL in place accordingly as follows. So just double check your settings.py file to make sure you have these prerequisites. Then you just wanna make sure that your templates list contains a Django templates backend where apps DERS, with the apps, app DERS option is set to true. This is also something you can find in your settings.py file, but to be more specific, I'll show you. So if you were to head onto your application's um, settings.py file, so let me just head on over there. And you go to templates, you must make sure that app DERS is true and that you have the following backend in place. But this is all you can see in your settings.py file along with the fact that you have the following django.contrib.static files installed apps and your static URL in settings.py also set. So just make sure you've also got that set up in your application. Okay. Right, so let's continue. So next you need to install the app. So you just wanna add in the debug underscore, underscore toolbar to your app. So I'm gonna copy that. I'm gonna head on to my application settings.py file going to go to my list of installed apps and I'm just going to paste in the following which is debug underscore toolbar. I've got that set. Then what I want to do is I want to add Django debug toolbars um, URL to the project to my base project URL so my main um, Django projects urls.py file that would be the location where your admin URL is situated as well. So what I'm going to do is copy the following and you want to head on over to the urls.py file where your settings.py file is. That's an easier way for me to explain it. And you just want to ensure that you add that in. Just be sure that you have imported the include function. So in this urls.py file here, I have the following line. By default, you're going to have from the django.urls module import the path function. And you can just add in a comma and then add in the include function so that you'll be able to utilize the debug toolbar. So very important, make sure you've added that in. Great. Next, we need to add in the middleware. So we need to add in the debug toolbar middleware. So let's head on to our settings.py file first and navigate to our middleware. So here we are. And you just want to copy and add in the following. Okay, I'm going to add it at the end of my list. So you can decide where you want to add it and I'll just adjust the spacing accordingly. 
then you want to go to step six and configure the internal IPs. So for the moment, we're in the local development environment. Of course, if you have your application hosted, you may want to change this accordingly. So what I'm going to do is copy the following list of internal IPs and you can put this anywhere in your settings.py file. I'll just put it down here. So here we have it. So here is our internal IP setup and ready to go. So make sure you've got that set for our local testing environment. Okay, and that is it. So just make sure that you have followed all of the necessary steps accordingly. I will be sure to attach a link to this installation guide in the description below as I mentioned. So make sure you've got that set. All right, so now you can run your application. So you can just run Python manage.py run server. There you go. And you can head on over to your application. All right, so we can refresh our page. And you should be able to see this panel appear automatically. If you don't, it's going to show up in the top right of your screen and it will say DJDT. So Django and it will be debug toolbar. So you can click on that. And of course, you can see a list of all of the various sections that you can explore. So for example, we can click on the history option and that's going to show the time in which we access this page, the method that we utilize, which will the get request at the following pass, and the status is 200 okay. We can also click on versions, which is going to show the Django version for your application. So we're using Django 4.2.7. We're using Python, the associated version of Python, and a list of our packages that are utilized in our project, such as crispy forms and debug toolbar. We can also see the time it took to go ahead and open up the app, the, web page to load it up. And there are a few more things we can also see such as the settings. So if you click here, you'll be able to see all the information that pertains to your settings.py file. You can also click on headers to see all of the information that pertains to your headers, to your requests. Now, of course, a lot of this is sensitive, so I can't reveal it on my side, but if you click on this, you'll see a more detailed outlook of all the headers and requests being sent with your application. Also SQL, so if there are any queries that you are utilizing on that application, you'll also be able to see that there. Specifically, you can also click on static files to see all the static files that are being utilized within your application, as well as the directory specifically of those static files, including your static file pass, all the apps associated with it and their location as well as templates. You can also see more information in terms of your context processes, where your templates were loaded and that their particular destination and how many templates are being rendered and from where. So if you have template inheritance, you can also see where that's being rendered from. We can also see we have a cache and we can also check all the signals that are being utilized within our application as well. Now, the good thing about this panel is you can go ahead and close it up accordingly as follows. You can hide this and let's move on to the registration page. Now this is utilized throughout our whole application so you can debug information on your application throughout um, your Django app. So we can go ahead on the registration page, click on the Django toolbar and it's very convenient. If you don't like it, you can just hide it and just continue with your testing in development. So you can open it up here and here we can click on history again that takes us to the, we can see information now in terms of our registration page. We made a get request to view it and the status 200. Of course, more information on Django versions, which seems to be for the whole application. The time, of course, which we have set. Of course, we can head on over to static files and of course we can see what has been applied here as well, as well as all of the various bits of information. Now, specifically, what will be of value to you will be the headers and the requests on each of the pages that you go to. Now, like I said, I cannot show this on screen, but you should be able to see the differences between the requests and the headers that you see on your application. Of course, we can of course see we are making a request for to the login page here, as we can see by the small text here that's being observed. We can see how long it took us and of course further history in terms of the request that we have been making throughout our application. We can see the templates. There is a bit of an update here with um, the bootstrap that's being utilized from Crispy Forms, how many templates are being rendered in total and how all of that is fitting in together.
All right, guys, so that is it. Of course, there's a lot more that you can read more about it. I just wanted to help you to get it set up and so you can get it all set up and ready to go. And you, of course, can read a little bit more about this package. Very useful and very helpful, I think. So Django Debug Toolbar. So that's it, guys, for this video tutorial. And as always, thank you for the support and I'll see you next time. See you.